Welcome back to another edition of Components Breakdown. Today we're going to look at a game that was first published in 2007 by Queen Games and it's called Thieves. Thieves is a two to four player family game that takes about 60 to 75 minutes to complete. Its central game mechanics revolve around card drafting, chip pooling, and a point to point movement system. The most interesting thing about Thieves though is the roles that each of the players takes on and that is of an archaeologist. Each of the turns, the players are going to travel around central parts of Europe finding resources and gathering knowledge in order to eventually undercover key artifacts in five different civilizations that are littered around the Mediterranean area. So with that, let's first open up the box, look at the insert and some of the components, and then we'll set up a game and explain some of the gameplay. The first thing inside the box is a player aid reference sheet and it is a double sided heavy um, weight paper with gloss on it. On one side simply shows you all the historical items found from the game. Um, this is not pertinent to gameplay in any means but it gives the players a nice historical reference to look at. On the other side is an overview of all the research and exhibition cards that are included in the game. And this can be passed around from one player to the next. Next you have the eight page full color rule book. There are lots of examples in here. It's very well written and quite easy to understand on your first playthrough. The next thing you see is a fold out player board and the player board um, is quite small and it will free float inside the box. There is a nice section down here for the cards. Now some of these I have sleeved and they fit right back in so that is quite nice for those people that like to sleeve all of their cards. There are summary cards of all the locations and there's five different um, excavation locations. There are cards for research um, and there are cards for the exhibition cards as well as um, support cards, knowledge cards, and congress cards and whatnot. And we'll go into these in a little more depth in just a moment. There are archaeologists of four different colors in here and each of those colors also has a time marker um, which is used to show what time they are at in a specific year. The last thing is the year marker and that is a black little round token. There are four time wheels which allow you to figure out how much time you'll be spending at each of the excavation sites. There are excavation permission chips for every player and there's five for each player. And the last thing are there are five bags with a colored top showing you which chits go inside these specific bags. And inside here you have all the chits and all of the items that can be found inside each of those excavation locations. And it's quite nice because each of the bags has a different picture on them. And again, they're all color coordinated. So everything fits nicely back inside the, the box and the insert is perfectly made for the game. So with that, let's actually break out a game, show you some basic gameplay, and give you my final thoughts on it. I can get it. I can almost reach it, Dad. Indiana. So now we have the game set up for a two-player game. I'm going to jump right in and show you the basic mechanics, the way the cards work, the way the system within the game works, and that is the time system, and then the object of the game or what you're actually trying to do. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the components one more time. As you notice, each of the players starts off with their own time wheel and a set of five excavation sites. The sites are double sided. On one side you have the color of the excavation area and on the back side you have the same thing with an X. Now the game starts off in the year 1901 for a two and a three player game. It starts off in 1902 for a four player game. What happens is you're allowed to in each year excavate from one of these sites. The blue site simply means it's from Mesopotamia and each of these represent one of these five um, excavation sites at the bottom. The board is actually broken into several different regions. As you look at it, the European area is for travel and um, researching and trying to get enough knowledge to be able to go down into the Mediterranean and actually excavate from the sites. When you excavate from the sites, you're going to be pulling chits from these bags. Now the chits look like this and some of them are blank on one side and some of them have numbers on one side. And what you're going to be doing is you're going to be trying to get as many of these as you can um, when you actually excavate. Now remember you can only excavate once per year. 
the bag is distributed as such. Inside of a bag you have a specific number of blank chits and chits that have numbers on them. Basically there are about 15 in, it, in each bag that have um, a number on them or are worth a value and another 16 that are worthless. And every time that you excavate all the worthless ones actually go back into the bag. So the more that people excavate from a specific site the harder it is to pull things out of that specific excavation site. Well, there are reference cards up here at the top that show you the distribution, and these are available to everyone to look at at any time. So if you're looking around the board and you see that one of the players has the six and the five and two of the fours, you know that there's only two threes, two two, or three two, three threes, two twos, and four ones left. So it may not be a place that you're going to want to excavate from. So, so far we've talked about the chits, and the excavation sites. Let's talk about the board itself. As I mentioned, it's broken into two different basic regions. The top is traveling from one location to the next and picking up as many different knowledge pieces as you can. The bottom of the board is for the excavation areas and there's five of them here and they're all color coordinated that match the bags and your excavation markers. You're also going to see two other regions on the board. The, right, the left hand side here is for exhibi exhibitions. And these can, can be plated at any time that you have a specific number of chits from a location. For example, if you have one yellow, two green, and three blues, you can go to Moscow and, and show an exhibit with the tokens that you have and get five victory points. And we'll explain the victory points in just a moment. On the right hand side are areas in Europe where you're going to be actually gaining knowledge. So what is knowledge. Now all the cards here are represented with symbols on them and we're going to go through these briefly. These will pop up in the top right corner and they'll be refilled on every player's turn but basically what you're going to be doing is you're going to be going to specific locations and trying to research specific things. On the very top of the card shows you what area in Europe you need to go to. For instance this one is London and you need to spend three hours of time to get this card. This card actually allows you to recycle one of your excavation sites. So if you've already um, excavated, as I said before, in Mesopotamia for that turn, you can actually you burn this card and be able to do it again. So that's what this does. This is a Zeppelin that allows you to travel from any location to another location. And you have to go to Rome to research this one, and it costs one hour of time. This is a card that allows you to move three spaces for one negative time. Shovels allow you to dig for more chits on a turn. If you have two shovels, you get to dig for one more chit than normal. If you have three, it's two more. Researchers are very similar to that. If you have two researchers, you get one free book of knowledge. And for three researchers, you get two free books of knowledge. The books of knowledge look like this, and they come in denominations of one, twos, and threes, and all the five different colors. Again, they have a name on where they can be researched, for instance, Rome, for one hour. London for two hours and London for four hours. As you see, the larger books cost more hours of time, but they're more, um, they're easier to be able to allocate those resources to be able to dig for more chips. The last card in the deck are the Congress cards. And these act as point systems at the end of the game. The more of these Congress cards you have, up to seven, the more points you get at the end of the game. So if you have all seven of them, you get 28 points. So, how do hours work? This is where the cool gameplay mechanic works. You can take as many actions in your turn as you wish as long as um, you are behind another player. The game starts off with everybody starting off in the year 1901 and on the one hour marker. As you notice, everything or the game board goes around and this is not a point scoring system here, it's an hour system. And it goes up to 52, which acts as 52 weeks in a year. So when you take an action, you simply move however many spaces you wish to move on the board. So if I wish to travel for the red player to Rome, it's going to cost me two hours to get to Rome. So I move two. And then I'm allowed to take one action. So I could try to research something in Rome. And of course I don't have anything in Rome, so let's switch that to say Berlin. So I took one hour to travel to Berlin, and then I took one hour to research it. So that cost me two hours. And basically that's my turn and I take this card and I get one research of red for that turn and this spot gets refilled with the next card in the deck 
and it's the next player's turn. For instance, and let's move ahead a couple turns to show you how this time system works. Say Blue took a really big turn where he traveled several spaces in one turn and then spent a lot of money to research something. Say for instance he researched this London card. So he moved a total of eight hours for one turn. On Red's turn, if he spends a whole turn less than that amount, he can actually go again as many times as it takes for him to catch up or to bypass that other player. So the the back player always gets as many turns or as many hours to spend as the player that's next furthest up on the time track as him. Well, how does research work and how do you actually pull chits from the bag? Looking down here, for instance, if the red player has four knowledge, you would look at the time wheel on here and see that he has four knowledge at the very top. So, for spending X amount of hours, from one hour all the way to 12 hours, he can pull that many chits from the bag. So, if he wants to expend all 11 hours, he would move up 11 hours on the board, and then he'd be able to pull five chits from the bag. And that's basically the, the way the game works. It's an extremely simple game to learn. Um, there's, there's, some, there's some strategy in here, definitely. Uh, there's a lot of luck value, too. So it, it falls into that category of being um, a really nice, consistent game to play. It's not deep strategically, and it's not going to draw any hardcore gamers in, but it's a great family game. So I hope this gives everybody a good explanation of how the game works. Um, I recommend it to anybody who plays just within a family atmosphere. I probably would not recommend it to somebody that plays competitively or who enjoys deeper strategy games. But I enjoy Thebes. It's a great relaxing game and it's a good break from some of the normal typical games that I play. So that's Thebes and thanks again for watching.